Well, it's an honor to be here, but I feel humbled. Thank you all. Welcome here. I laid that thing down here because this is holy ground where I stand. I'm just going to depend on the master. Don't come to listen to me. Come to listen to what Jesus has got to say tonight. I don't know but one thing. It's time to quit. I need my specs. <laughs> I usually need them up there. I need them down here. You, can, you, you could use mine. They both come from Walmart. <laughs> no, I, I've been wanting to speak. I, I'm not a preacher. I'm a, just an old prison camp speaker. Doesn't mean that I was incarcerated. They would let us out, you know, if we acted right, no problem. But it's good to have everybody here. I got one friend back there that a little special to me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna remind him of something. We were one time off in a van and he was driving and I told him, I said, uh, ooh, it's about time to eat. I know you got more money than me, so we're gonna go eat. He said, when I eat, everybody eats. When I pay, Everybody pays. Thank you, Terry. <laughs> well, listen, it's good to be here tonight. I come to represent my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I don't have anything to say other that he is the Lord of my life. I want you to know I believe in him. He is everything. He is my life, my total I come tonight to say if there's any doubt in your mind, if you got me, so many times I've talked to people, I say, I know where I'm going. I remember years ago, my wife said, I know where I'm going. And I said, I wish I could say that. I talk to people, they don't know. Listen, you need to know where eternity is at. Amen. If you don't know, if you don't know, question it. Question yeah. it. And I don't say that to be mock. I say that in all honesty. We need to know where we're going to spend eternity. I ask you to join me in prayer. Now, Father Lord, as we gather here tonight, I want to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. I want to lift you up, Lord. Everything is for here tonight. I'm going to ask you to speak. I ain't got anything to say, Lord. I'm going to ask your will, your way be done. That you come in the boat and abide with us tonight. You know the needs, Lord. You supply me as you see fit. You take charge, Lord. You bring the message. You know what we need. Touch souls and hearts that need to be touched. People be drawn to thee, Lord. I give you the praise. I thank you, my Father, my Lord, my Savior. Amen. Amen. Turn with me to the book of Luke, chapter 15. I think all good preachers here, they read a verse, a line, or something. So I got one thing I'm going to say. I'm going to quote one word. Whew. He came to himself. That's what this message is about tonight. In Luke, chapter 15, Jesus has been speaking, he's been teaching, and everything's been going good. And all of a sudden, Jesus said in chapter 15 in verse 1, they drew near to him and the You ever see Fred Sanford do this? Aha, uh -huh, these are better. Chapter 15, Luke. They drew near to him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. Listen, what I'm saying to show you right here. We're going to talk about three men tonight. Here's two groups right here. These are sinners. These are men that come draw near him because they wanted to hear what he said. Why? Jesus had something special. Jesus would draw you to you. Just listen, that's the very reason I'm standing here tonight. I remember the very night that Jesus drew me to him. I know, I know, I know 
because I sat in an old ball field. I went to a meeting with my wife. I didn't go to hear anything. I went just to please her. But as I sat there that night, and just before it's over with, I heard God speak to me just as plain as anything. He said, son, I'm about tired of messing with you. You either give yourself to me, or our Holy Spirit will depart from you. Now, when the Holy Spirit departs, ladies and gentlemen, you're in trouble. I fell on my face. Chris knows why I was there. He was there with me tonight. That's been about 43 years ago, I think, 44 years ago. I've made the point, I've finally reached a point that I've served him longer than I served Satan. Amen. And I thank Amen. God for that, what I do. But you see what I'm trying to say here? The first first one, it says sinner. They came to him to listen. They want to be fed. They want to be drawn. They want to be saved. But now here's another group of people, the scribes and the Pharisees. And you look at here tonight. This is church people. This is rigid Jewish leader that thought they had it all together except for one little thing. I think they were lost because they could not, they could not come to worship Jesus. They come to murmur, find fault. How many times have we seen this, ladies and gentlemen, in church? I talked to a woman not long ago. I said, I miss you at church. I'm not, I won't be back. I said, what happened? Somebody hurt my feelings. I said, was it me? Oh, no. Well, it's a deacon. My job is to try to help you. Oh, I ain't going to talk about it. It's a man lived right down the road just before that. I said, I miss you at church. Well, something went on there that I didn't like. Well, it, 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 was it me? No. I said, Let's, can we talk about it? I can't help you. No. You know, see, they like the tribes and the Pharisees. They came to murmur. They came to find fault. Yeah. And listen, ladies and gentlemen, don't come here tonight to find fault. Come here like this and come to listen. Come to look that Jesus let him draw us to him, that we'll be what he would have us to be tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you see, now the reason I say this right here, these two verses sets the stage. Jesus has been speaking. Jesus has been teaching. And they, they, you see, he runs into this thing. And he sees the, the, the scribes and the Pharisees. Now, let's move over now to verse uh, 11. This scripture we talk about tonight is going to be talked about the lost and the found. And I, saw, I put down here, if I can read, I put lost and sought, found and restored, and then the celebration from joy. This is what we're talking about, the, one, the lost and the found tonight. You're in one group or the other, you see. And we come to here, and in the first verse, in verse 11, it says, A certain man had two sons. Now, we, we see three men here. Nothing about mom. We don't know anything about it. There's dad. Older son and a younger son. Now, if we look at these three men, there's three characters right here. If you'll look at it, your life will fit in one of the three characters. Now, be careful. Don't get judgmental. Just stop and think about it. Because, and I looked at that, and I, I'm scared to say that my life, it didn't fit years ago like I wanted to, but it's, it's come a point in time that I want my life to fit like it's supposed to be, you Amen. see. So I get it here tonight. But the chief man had three, had two sons, you see. Now, and this is mostly the parable of the prodigal son. And the word prodigal means wasteful. That's where you'll get when you find out about this younger son. Let's read about him right here now. In verse 12 it said, And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divideth unto them his living. Now at this point in time in the old Jewish history at the end of the day listen, what I have worked and what I have made belongs to me. What my parents belong to them and they, I inherited. But listen, here's the son that's asking for money. He said, Dad, I want my inheritance. This is money that he had not earned. He did not own. He did not earn, but he said, Dad, I want my inheritance. What he was basically saying, Dad, I'm tired of listening to you. I want to be my own boss. I don't want you telling me, hey, son, go to work. Hey, son, do this. He said, I am tired of that. I will not put up some more. Give me my money. I'm going to go. He's basically looking at him and said to his face, Dad, you just as you were dead. I'm through with you. I'm leaving. Now, that's pretty harsh words, but that's exactly what he was meaning when he said that. Yep. He said, I want your money and don't care about you. Now, back in that day, inheritance meant a lot back there. I mean, if you'll read the Jewish history, that meant a lot to have that inheritance, you see. But you see, as he 
comes down to his seat and it's what he gives, all these things. And then I got some notes right here. I don't know if I can even read them or not. But anyhow, <laughs> I, I just had eye surgery Thursday and well, I wasn't planning on all that happening when it did. And, but anyhow, but let's go, let's go ahead. Let's just trust the master. That's the reason I laid that cane down there. This is holy ground. This is God's territory up here. I depend on him to get me through it. And in verse uh, 13, he said, And the many days after the younger son gathered all together, took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with righteous living. Now, it, it, if we get in here later on, we're going to find out part of what this righteous living is. He wasted it. We don't know exactly all. But he said, all together and took his journey to a far country. Now, what do you think a far country means? It could have been out of the land of Israel. It could have been down the road. It could have been an attitude. You know, to me, a far country, if I had to walk, would probably be near to the highway. Old squirrel might could walk to Winston enough. I couldn't. But you see what I mean? We talk about a far country. It's where you at in your attitude. When you're not under... If you didn't come here tonight to worship him, to enjoy this service, you're in a far country. Amen. That's basically what he said. You're out of walk. In other words, he just, he just said, I, I'm tired of it. I'm going, you see. And he, and, and he went into a far country. There wasted his substance. Now, we don't know exactly what he done. He could. He may have invested all in uh, camels and got a bad breed, but I don't think so. Because when he gets down to the latter part, his brother, his older brother, must have fought him, must have known a little about him because he nailed him down what he'd done, you see. This boy had took his money, his inheritance, what dad had given him, what he didn't earn, but he wasted every part of the portion. Have we not wasted part of my life? I have. I wasted a good part of my life, when I, a portion of my life that I could have been serving the master. But you see, I didn't do it. I can't get that back. It was wasted. That's the same thing with him. He wasted. Now, you see the point we've got? We've got him. He's left. He's in a foreign country. He's wasted his money. He has spent it all. He's broke. Nothing. Now, I don't know whether you've ever been far away from home and broke. Trust me. It's not the best feeling you have. I know. I've been there. And he, he, I really think it's a pretty good experience. He's been there one time. It'll make you appreciate home. Amen. I think of this boy, you know, he gave up all the comforts of home. There was good food, a good warm bed, family, fellowship, love. But he said, I don't want that. Give me my money. I'm going to go. I'm going to go down the road. I'm going to live my life. I'm going to do my thing. His thing got him in trouble. Amen. You see, that's what we're talking about tonight. And then verse uh, 14, And when he had spent all there came a mighty famine in this, that land, he began to be in want. Now if we talk about a famine, basically I guess about the best way to describe that, that is a want. That is what you don't have and what you want. In other words, the boy and the country was broke. The boy and the country was without. I suppose at that time, we don't know. Uh, I, I, I could never find anything. Maybe the rains didn't come and the crops didn't grow. Maybe there was disease at the animals. But for some reason or another, the country became an thing. I think, I think, me thinking, I think God's son, I'm going to teach you a lesson. Yes. I'll put you in this far country it's not going to be what you thought it's going to be. You see, and the famine come, and there he stood. He had nothing he wanted. I'm sure at this point now, his mind's begin to drift a little bit. There's Dad. He's got food on the table. He's got servants. He's got livestock. But he's also... There's his older brother. We don't know what kind of relationship between him and his older brother. We're going to get on that in a little bit if nothing don't happen. But let me tell you one thing. At this point in time, he took his all, he wasted it all, and he's in a famine. He's in want. But you know what? He's still 
his son. Amen. Still his son. Listen, no matter where I go, no matter what happened, I'm still the son of God. I belong to him. You see, no matter what Chris does, good or bad or whatever, he's still my son. My daughter, she's still mine. You see what I'm talking about? We still, we still belong to dad, you see. Amen. If we ask Jesus to have mercy on us and he saved us, we still his son, male or female, you belong to him, you see. That's what he's trying to say here tonight. Let's go to 15. And we had spent all there, arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. In 15, and went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. Let's just stop there just a minute. That is a pretty low position to a Jewish child, a Jewish man, to have to feed swine. That hit bottom right there. Not to mention that, now maybe, now I guess some of the hog farming now has got fancy, but I can remember when we had hogs or pigs or whatever, uh, I bet some of y'all remember too, you know, the, the mud, the waste, it just wasn't a pretty thing to have to get in there and work on that. But this is, boy, you see what he's having to do, he's stooped to, he's got nothing to do, joined himself to a citizen in the country, and he sent him to the fields to feed swine in verse 16, and he would have filled his belly with the husk of the swine did eat, and no man gave to him. Now this, this husk, it was a pod that grew on a tree, and he, that's what they were feeding the pigs, and he had nothing to eat, but if he could grab one of them, he could eat. It'd be kind of like the old wild bean tree now. It'd be what it looked like, a, a, a something off a tree. That's eating pretty bad, you see. But you see the shape he's got into now. He's spent all, he's in a famine, he's in a hog pen. <coughs> but remember, he's living in a hog pen, but he's still dad's son. Amen. Still dad's son. That's what it's all about, you see. And then, uh, now here's the part that I get a blessing at. Verse 17, it said, And he came to himself. Glory to God. It was a night. Thank you, Jesus. It was a night. Back in 1975, in August, open ball field. When God spoke to me, I came to myself. Amen. Cloud, you know what we're talking about. Yes. If you've been there, you know what I'm talking about. Men and women, if you sit here tonight, has there ever been a time you come to yourself, you begin to know where you stood, where you need to go, what happened, where you was headed. If you don't know, if you don't know, tonight's tonight, you see. You. Because I say he came to himself, and he said, how many hired servants of my father have bread enough to spare, and he perished with hunger. This lad, living in the pig pen, living in the waste, in the mud, in the mire, hungry, thinking about all he had at home. Then he's thinking about he wasted. I wonder, he said, go up the road, said, hey, Joe, you remember how I used to party, how I used to buy the food, the drinks and everything? Could you let me have a little something? He said, don't know you. Don't know you. Fair weather friend, they play out. That's they just right. don't last, you see. So true. That is the world to what it's doing. Yeah. That's right. Listen, the world will turn its back on you, but Jesus will never, ever you, leave you, you see. He'll always be here for us, you see. And you, that's what to me, he said, I perish with hunger. He said he come to himself for one time, I think, he was begin to make a good decision. Sin will blind you. Yes. Sin will cloud your thoughts. You cannot think like you did when you was in sin. Once you get saved, you see things different. Yes, that's right. See, Amen. the life I used to live that I thought was fun and glory and hallelujah, no, I have found peace. 
peace. You cannot find peace when you're living in sin. You see, my life's changed. Tonight, I look forward to Wednesday night at church. Wednesday night, I look forward to Sunday morning. You see, I love to be here with my friends. As I look out here, most all of us, through some time or another, our life has touched something. We've changed. We've got together with men. You see, that's what I'm saying. Your life means something when you become a Christian. You learn what God is trying to say to you. And here he says in verse 18, I will arise and go. You see, that's what we got to do. If we're going to walk for the Lord, we got to arise and we've got to go. And he says, I will rise and go to my Father. And I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. No more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. Now listen, he's still the son. He's still the son. But he has given up his inheritance. He has nothing he has no way to go home and say, Dad, I want my part of the money. What he's trying to say is, Dad, let me just go home and be as a servant because I can't, I can't, I can't stand it anymore. I've hit bottom. Dad, I'm, I'm, I just can't make it. I just got to have some help. I can't make it, you see. That's what he did. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, that looks like the end, but that is the beginning. Amen. And you see, you reach down there, you reach down, you got nowhere to go. Once you hit bottom, it's nothing to do but go up, you Thank see. You, you see, that's what I'm trying to, that's what I want to say tonight. I want you to know, which again, he said, I'm not worthy to be called our son. Libby, there was a time I wasn't worthy to be called your husband, but you put up with me. Thank God for being a Christian woman that put up with me and took amen, care of me. Amen. Thank God for that. Listen, we all know the same story. I bet you I'll ever go back over my life and think about the people that reached out to you. It's helped you. It's been here for you. It means something, you know. Just like, I'm not going to call any names, but we've had some people saved. We've had a young man saved out there in the Sunday school class. I've been praying for him. Listen, church, are we praying for him? Are we supporting him? We don't want him to get in a far country. We want him to be supported, to be lifted up, to where well, we can back him up Amen. and be here with him, each and every one. That's our obligation as mature Christians, to reach out and help these that need to be helped, you see, to take care of them and be here for them and help them. Amen. See, that's what he's saying. And then verse 20, he said, and he arose. He said in verse 18, I will arise and go. In verse 20, he said, he arose, came to his father, but he was yet a great way off. His father saw him. Glory, let's just stop right there. Woo, glory, hallelujah. I'm telling you, that's where it gets, that's where it gets good. Now listen, you gotta be a dad to know this. You gotta be a dad, but I can see dad, he was heartbroken. His son had took it away, he took his money, he took everything and left. He said, Dad, I just like Dad. I don't care nothing about you. I'm done with you. But you see, before, I don't know what. But I can see Dad. I bet every morning he comes out. He looks down. Oh, if I could just see my son one more time. Oh, if I could just see my son come down that road one more time. What it would mean to me. But my son didn't make it. My son hadn't come home. But look here in verse when he said, he arose and came to his father, but when he was a gate, well, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Amen. Glory, hallelujah. You see what I'm saying? What would you have done if your son would have done that to you? Would you have got a stick and beat him? Would you have scolded him? Listen, some of you people who studied the Jewish law, he could have had his son stoned yes. for what he'd done. But he wasn't interested in having his son stoned. He was still his son. Amen. Come on back home, son. That's what I want you. Back home. Thank you, Jesus. Someday home coming. I'm waiting. I'm looking. Amen. Thank you for letting me stand. Let me proclaim me as Lord and Savior. That's all I want to do is proclaim him as my Lord and Savior. In verse 21, and the 
And his son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and in thy sight am no more worthy to be called thy son. He realized where he was at. He realized he had done wasted his inheritance. He had done brought shame, disgrace to the family's name. Heartache to dad. All this, you see. And when he says, sinned against heaven, I, I look, I've tried to look at that and, and, and decide exactly what he said. And, and he said, against heaven. And I sometimes wonder if this old boy, he's, you know, while he was walking down the road, trying to say, now what am I going to tell dad? I bet my sins are so high, I bet they reach to heaven. You see, we don't know. But you see, where was that? But he came to himself, and he went to dad, you see. Now in verse 22, And the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, put it on him, a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet. At this point, there's a son. The law could have been stoned. His daddy could have done what he wanted. But what did he do? To put, now listen, here's a boy just come out of a pig pen. Out of the mud, the mire, and the waste. He's walking down the road. He may have run across a branch or a, wind, a rainstorm and got a little clean. But dad didn't care about the smell, the odor, the condition. He just put his arm around, hugged him, said, Bring a robe, put a robe on him. Put shoes on his feet and put a ring on his finger. That means when he put a ring on his finger, he was back in the family. Amen. Back in the family. He said, I'm not having anything to say about the inheritance. He didn't give it up, but he was home. He was home. There's a warm bed to sleep in, food on the table, fellowship, dad. You see, that meant a lot right there. That's what it's all about, you see. And then... 23 is said, and bring forth, bring hither the fatty calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry, for this my son was dead and is alive. He is lost and found, and they began to be merry. They began to celebrate, excuse me. Might be the cooking I eat, that might be for some own cooking. That'll help anybody sick. <laughs> And bring a fatted calf, kill it, eat, and be merry. Dead. His son was just like he was dead. He was gone. But he's alive. He's back home. You see, I was dead in sins and trespasses. But when Jesus reached down that night, I, I, I can feel the hands. He reached down that night, picked me up, put me on solid ground. I was alive. I could feel a burden. I could feel the weight off my back. I could feel it. And I'm going to tell you, the reason I say I know Jesus, you've got to know Jesus. I'm talking about you've got to know. You know, I've had a little heart trouble. I think about everything went wrong. And I'm on a medication to take. Without that, they say, I'll die. Side effects of that medication is it's going to choke you to death. Now that's not the most pleasant. It's not been too long ago. One night, I got to choking. I'd been struggling breathing. I got so bad I couldn't breathe. From, I had to get my mouth just gasping for breath. I fell over my face. I said, Lord, you all I got. Medicine won't help. Here I am. If you want to call me home, take me home. I'm yours. I'm ready. But God, I've got to have some help. When Jesus is all you got, that's all you need. Amen. Listen. Within five seconds. Amen. I have never breathed as good in my life as I breathe now. I hadn't had a minute's trouble. Listen, that's the God that I serve. Amen. That's the God that you serve. If you don't know him tonight, don't leave this place. If you're not sure, 
If you can't stand up and say, I know where I'm going. I know I'm heading to heaven. Right here's the answer. On your face before him. There's men and women that will pray for you, counsel you, help you, talk to you. But listen, ladies and gentlemen, you've got to know tonight, you see. Now, verse 25, it changes. Most people just preach on this and they quit. Most people never get back about the scribes and the Pharisees and the sinners. But now, you see, we're getting to the next part right here. Now his elder son was in the field. He was working, doing his job, using his inheritance, helping dad, just like he's supposed to. And as he came and drew nigh unto the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of his servants and asked him, What does these things mean? And he said unto him, Thy brother has come home, and thy father has killed a fatty calf because he has received him safe and sound. Oh, man. Safe and sound. His brothers come home. How would you feel if your brother had been gone and come home? Maybe he spent inheritance, but it was his. This older son received, in the Jewish law, he received two portions to the younger son, one. He still owned two thirds, two thirds of the estate. He was well off financially. But his brother come home. Now what does it say? In verse 28. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and treated him and pleaded. Here's this older boy. This is the boy that owns two thirds of his estate. He stayed home. He's worked. He's done like we'd like to say right. But. He's greedy, he's selfish, he's angry, he complaining. He's all the negative that you can put on him. He is not happy that his brother's home. What kind of relationship do you think they had before we left? See, we don't know. We don't know what could, we don't know that maybe, now this is maybe, maybe they couldn't get along. Maybe they had problems. Maybe that part of the problem. We don't know. But what we know, there was a younger son that left dad, spent it all, repented, asked for forgiveness, come home. And dad loved him and took him in. Now here's the older son. Dad's out there and said, son, please, please come in. Your brother's here. The family's back together. We're going to... We're going to party. We're going to make merry. We're going to celebrate. 29, and, the answers, and he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee. Neither thy transgress at any time thy commandments, and yet thou never givest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. And as soon as thy son was has What's come which thou hast devoured, which hath devoured thy living with harlots and has killed for him the fatted calf? You see, when he says harlot, that tells me part of what the younger son had spent his and wasted his time on. His older brother may have slipped down there just to see what was going on. We don't know. We don't need to know. But it, and in verse 31, he said unto him, Son, thou art with me. And all that I have is thine. And it was meant that we should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. Now let's go back to verse 1 and 2. You see, there is the lost, the sinners. That's the younger son. He was the lost. He was the sinner. But there's the scribes and Pharisees. They were the rigid Jewish church leaders. Holier than I. Listen, we may have some dead, cold churches just like that now. You go in there and they won't speak to you. I remember when I was in Nashville, see, Tennessee, rolled up to the big Baptist church in my jeans, them three-piece suits, they looked at me and said, you go on the balcony, you're not allowed down here. So you see, there still may be there, but that's the older son. You see what I mean? He wouldn't accept the younger brother. He wouldn't accept he was compassionate. You see, 
what I'm trying to say here tonight, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know, if you don't know for sure where you're going, don't leave this building. If you've never been saved, I'd like to look around. I say everybody's been saved, but see, I don't know. You don't know me till you see my life. So listen, Pastor Chris, I'm gonna turn it over to you. I thank you. God bless you. I love you. Love you. Amen. I'm glad you get. You get. We're gonna have us.